What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya, and in today's lesson, we're going to learn 10 advanced verbs that will help you stand out when taking your CAE and CPE exams, or just increase dramatically your vocabulary. Are you ready? So take a notebook and let's kick off. Let's start by learning some magic words that will stand you in good stead. The first verb we're going to learn today is to jeopardize. To jeopardize. It can be spelled with Z, American, or S, British. Or you can also say to put in jeopardy. And it means to put in danger or at risk. And now let's look at some examples. The first one, he might jeopardize his career if he continues being so careless at work. Another example, using so much plastic packaging puts oceans and rivers in jeopardy. And one more example, a lack of communication could jeopardize your relationship. Let's move on to our second magic verb, which is to skyrocket. Skyrocket. It means to rise extremely quickly to a very high level. And now let's look at some examples. The first one, housing prices have skyrocketed again. Another example, electric car sales are likely to skyrocket next year. And the third example, sadly, the national debt is skyrocketing. Now let's learn two C1 verbs. Number three, to trigger. To trigger. It means to cause something to start. And now let's look at some examples. The first one, a new case of spying may trigger an international conflict. Another example, smoking can trigger serious health diseases such as lung cancer or diabetes. And one more, signing this agreement might trigger negative consequences for the company. Number four, to happen to do something. It's a very useful verb which means to do something by chance. And now, three examples. The first one, if you happen to be in Valencia, let me know and I will show you around. The second example, if you happen to be in Australia, don't miss the Great Barrier Reef. It's amazing. And the third example, do you happen to know how to edit videos? Now let's start with our C2 verbs. Number five is to relish. After to relish, you need ing, to relish doing something. It means to like or enjoy something. And now let's look at some examples. The first one, I always relish a challenge. I set a goal and go for it. Another example, I relish working as an English teacher and running my YouTube channel. And one more, I relish traveling the world. It's the best investment one can make. Let's continue number six, to undermine. To undermine. It means to make somebody less confident, less powerful, or to make something weaker and less effective. And now some examples. The first one, you shouldn't let negative comments undermine your confidence. Number two, the latest recession undermined the country's economy. And another example, the manager's failure undermined his impeccable reputation. Let's move on to our verb number seven, which is to strive. To strive. It means to try very hard to do something, to make a lot of effort to achieve it, especially for a long time or against difficulties. And now some examples. The first one, striving for perfection, will bring you nothing but frustration. Another example, I'm striving to improve my English. Instead of saying I'm trying to improve my English, you can say I'm striving to improve my English. And one more example, I strove to finish my first marathon despite the injury. Let's continue number eight, to crave or to have a craving for something. It means to want something very much. And now three examples. The first example about me, I've been craving donuts lately. 
Another example, there are so many social issues that create attention. And one more example, I'm craving to travel the world. Number nine, to linger, to linger. It means to take a long time to leave or disappear. And now some examples. The first one, the musty smell lingered in the kitchen for days. Another example, I lingered on the last words he told me before leaving. And one more example, it's a kind of event that will linger in your memory. And last but not least, the verb to draw the line at something. It means to put a limit on what you will do or accept. And now three examples. The first example, I don't mind washing the dishes, but I draw the line at doing your laundry. Another example, I put up with working long hours, but I draw the line at having to be available 24 seven. And the last example, the company exploits its employees. It's high time they drew the line at working overtime for free. So I really hope you enjoyed this English bit and these 10 advanced verbs. I'm sure they will help you impress examiners and people in general. Guys, if you enjoyed this English bit, don't forget to give it a like as it's super motivating. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and connect with me on Instagram. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao for now!